Greetings, Mother Factors! My name is Sam, and today we're off on a little foray across the globe again, with almost no risk of getting a disease! Hooray! This time we're off to a picturesque, lovely country called Austria. We're here to talk its history, its attractions, even some of its most famous people. God, what a ride. But whose life did Napoleon sort of ruin there? What did Austria's world's toughest team relay race consist of? And did anybody actually clap along as if they felt like a room without a roof? Because that's not a room, it doesn't make sense. Why would you be happy if a room doesn't have a roof on it? It doesn't make sense and nobody should have ever clapped. Sorry, it's been a good six years I've spent with that on my chest. Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so come ride with me through the veins of history, specifically Austria's, and to the wonderful streets of Vienna, as we go through 101 facts about Austria. Number one. In case you wondered, no, I'm not just saying Australia lazily, I'm saying Austria, the largely mountainous landlocked country of South Central Europe. It's wrapped in a rich, creamy texture of Germany, Slovakia and Czech Republic to the north, northeast and northwest, Slovenia and Italy to the south, Hungary to the east, and Liechtenstein and Switzerland to the west, which is a big plus. No wait, that's a joke about the flag. Damn it! Number two. Now amazingly, the capital city of this here land is an ice cream, which must be a first for the what? oh no sorry it says Vienna, not Vienna, my bad. Vienna has a population of 1,888,776 people. Call blimey. Number three. Those Austrians don't speak Austrian, but rather German, as their official language that is. In fact, Vienna is the second largest German speaking city after Berlin, and it's not even in Germany. Number four. It's been said that Austria only appears to be a small country on the map because so much of it's vertical, a bit like Stephen Merchant. Around 62% of the country is covered by the Austrian Alps, for instance, at 1,640 feet above sea level. Number 5. The Austrian flag is actually pretty unique in that it comes in two flavours. There's one flown by citizens, which is red, white and red again, but if the government put up the flag, it suddenly has an eagle and a coat of arms in the centre. Number 6. That flag dates back to 1191, where Duke Leopold V fought in the Battle of Acre during the Third Crusade. Yeah, there were three of them. Number seven. The main language of the land is German, as we mentioned back in the old past there, but various minority groups there also speak Croatian, Hungarian, Slovenian, and Turkish. Delightful. Number eight. There are a hell of a lot of mountains in the country, as we said, but there's also a frankly bold amount of lakes. The largest lake in Austria is Lake Neusiedl. The biggest mountainy boy is the Grossglockner, at 12,460 feet tall. Number 9. In fact, Lake Neusiedl is so big, it's shared with the neighbour Hungary. Although really, it should be thirsty if they want to share water. Oh, I hate myself so much. Number 10. Organic farming is a big thing over there too, in fact over 22% of the country's farmland is organic, and two thirds of the farms in Austria are located in alpine mountains. Number 11. Do you like caves? Do you like ice? Well Austria has got you covered, because in Werfen there's the largest ice cave in the world. It's 26 miles long. That's a huge cold cave. Number 12. Workers in Austria are well taken care of, with 5 weeks of paid vacation per year in addition to 13 legal holidays. Men in Austria can retire at the age of 65 and women at 60, and it's from them they can collect old age pensions. Austria, more like... what? I've oh, got nothing. Number 13. You know the North Atlantic Treaty Organization? Well, Austria is NATO part of that. <laughs> Lol. They're actually the only EU nation that isn't part of NATO. They're not allowed to be because of a treaty with the Allies in 1955 that commitment to perpetual neutrality means a ban on joining military alliances. Number 14. If you happen to go there, apparently you need to make eye contact before you drink or eat and need to say Guten Appetit or Malzit. Apparently, if you don't, it's considered rude. Or some say if you don't, you'll get seven years of bad, um, intimate times. Number 15. Back in 1784, Emperor Joseph II said that in the Austrian winter, people in just plain old normal houses could sell their own wine and cold food. Food that's meant to be cold, I should say. And people apparently still do this. You don't need a license or anything. Moonshine for everybody. Number 16. The key to a long life is apparently living in Vienna. By 2050, life expectancy in Vienna will be 89 years old for women and 85 years for men. Number 17. 
Austria's average unemployment rate from 1960 to 2013 is 4.59%. For some good old-fashioned context, it's the second lowest in the EU after Luxembourg. Number 18. Flip side of this though is that Austrians do apparently work a hell of a lot more, averaging 45 hours of work per week, which is a lot. Probably to make massive freezers so, you know, the big ice cream doesn't melt. You know, Viennetta. No, it's not the ice cream, it's Vienna. Damn it, Sam, stop thinking that. Number 19. Apparently working doesn't help you shift weight, because about half of Austrian men are overweight. That's in contrast to only 20.3% of Austrian women. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Number 20. Despite numerous attempts to impose a ban, Austria remains one of the few European countries that still allows smoking indoors. A friend of mine went there and can confirm that's true, as she went to an underground club and it was horrible. Number 21. So, history. Austria has been around for a hell of a long time. Number 22. Ah, no, I'm just kidding. There has been evidence of civilizations in Austria in the prehistoric times to 1800s. It started in around 400 BC when the Celtic peoples of Western Europe settled in the Eastern Alps. Number 22. Ooh. Then, yep, those guys came a march in. Those lovable road building, sewer creating scoundrels, the Romans. The togged chaps roamed right into Austria in around 200 BC and dominated the country as we know it until 15 BC. Number 23. They then established Carnuntum, a huge Roman legionary fortress. Imagine your Minecraft house, but bigger. This became the main settlement for the Romans and a city of 50,000, and it was in an area now known as Lower Austria. Number 24. Okay, fast forwarding a little, in 1276, when Rudolf I became the first of the Habsburgs to rule Austria, which was the beginning of the Habsburg Empire. Rudolf was already king of Germany and managed to acquire Austria too, but this made Austria a centre for power in Europe for many centuries. Number 25. The capital of the Habsburg Empire was Vienna, and at Point Prague. Now I know what you're thinking. What? That's in a different country! How the hell? But wait. The Habsburg monarchy ruled over many different countries centuries later, including Hungary and Slovakia and Bohemia and Croatia, but I'm jumping ahead. Number 26. Meanwhile, while the Habsburg Empire was growing, there was the Ottoman Empire over in Turkey, and the two of them didn't really get on very much. The Turkish threat, which included unsuccessful sieges of Vienna in 1529 and 1683, prompted Poland, Venice and Russia to join the Habsburg Empire in repelling the Turks. Number 27. One good thing that the Turks brought, albeit by accident, was coffee. A Polish chap named Jerzy Franciszek Kolczyski opened Vienna's first coffee house in around 1683. Having been a prisoner in a Turkish prison, he recognised the coffee beans that had been left behind when the Polish Habsburg allies kicked out the Ottoman Empire, and he knew exactly what to do with them. Number 28. Maria Theresa was the Archduchess of Austria in around 1740 to 1780, and was known as the most important ruler of the Age of Enlightened Absolutism. Well, well, well. Her daughter you may recognise too, her name was Marie Antoinette, who went on to be Queen of France, you know, until they put her head in a basket. Number 29. Napoleon, you know, the one, the non-dynamite one, occupied Vienna in 1805 and again in 1809. Both of these affected a guy called Ludwig von Beethoven, who was living there at the time. The first invasion rudely interrupted the premiere of Fidelio, his only opera. Number 30. The second was during Napoleon's May 10th 1809 siege, when Beethoven hid in his brother's basement to protect his already failing ears, meaning he couldn't get to work on any new music. Number 31. Confusingly, there was another Rudolf in the 1880s who was named after the first Rudolf. He died in 1889, but the circumstances were odd to say the least. The bodies of him and his mistress, Mary von Vetsara, were found in the Royal Hunting Lodge in Mailing. It was revealed only in 2015 from uncovered private letters that they took their lives together in a pact. How very Shakespearean. Number 32. By the way, it wasn't until 1918 to 1919 that the Habsburg Empire came to an end. You know, the one we mentioned facts ago now. They'd been in power since 1282. That's 750 years. Number 33. You'll notice that those years coincide with World War I, which is no coincidence. It was the World War that saw the end of the monarchy and the creation of the Austria Republic by the Treaty of saint germain en laye which meant Austria lost absolutely loads of land that they had. Number 34. And then later on, along came Hitler and co. In July 1934, there was an attempt at a coup by those idiots as they stormed the Chancellery building and shot the Chancellor, Engelbert Dollfuss, dead. He was then succeeded by Kurt von Schuschnigg. Number 35. 
Later, in 1938, something called the Anschluss happened, which was when, after four years of trying, Germany finally invaded and annexed Austria. So, things weren't going great. Number 36. Most of the Jewish population that had settled in Austria were then forced to leave or were killed. This annexation then went on until the end of the war in 1945. Number 37. Vienna was also divided into four parts after World War II and occupied in different areas by the US, France, the UK and the Soviet Union. The first district of Vienna, the inner city, was administered by all four powers. The occupation and division of Vienna then ended in 1955 with the Austrian State Treaty. Number 38. Alright, tell you what, let's talk a bit more about that place that means nothing to me. Oh, Vienna. Just kidding, it means a lot to me, because Vienna is the only capital city in the world to produce significant quantities of wine within its city limits. It's home to over 1,700 acres of vineyards, and that is a lot of grape juice. Number 39. Sigmund Freud, the father of psychoanalysis, lived and worked in Vienna for much of his career. During this time, he had a significant impact on the city, making it known as the birthplace of psychotheramummy, I mean therapy. Number 40. Vienna is often called the city of music, or the world's capital of music, as more famous composers have lived there than in any other city in the world. For instance, we have Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, Ludwig van Beethoven, Joseph Haydn, Franz Schubert, Johann Strauss, and Johannes Brahms. What a load of musical boys. Number 41. The famed Vienna Boys Choir's roots date as far back as 1498. Mozart worked with the choir, and even Franz Schubert was once a member. I'm telling you because, you know, music and stuff. The meaning of life. Today, there are more than 100 boys between the ages of 10 and 14 from 30 countries split into four choirs in Vienna, giving more than 300 performances a year. Number 43. The Vienna Zoo, or Tietgarten Schönbrunn, as I've just butchered there, is the world's oldest and only Baroque zoo. Built in the gardens of Schönbrunn Palace in 1752, the zoo was once the private menagerie of Emperor Franz Stephen and Empress Maria Theresa. We mentioned her earlier. Number 44. Tiergarten Schönbrunn now boasts over 700 different animal species and was voted the best zoo in Europe. Plus, with its original Baroque architecture, it's also considered the world's most beautiful zoo too. Number 45. The famously French pastry croissants actually had Viennese origins. They're based on the Austrian Kipferl, which means crescent in German. Bakers in Vienna made Kipferl to commemorate Austria's victory over the Ottoman Turks in 1683, their shape based on the crescent seen on the uniform of the enemy. Number 46. In 1770, when Maria Antoinette of Austria married King Louis XVI of France, she introduced her favourite pastry to the French. The French made a few changes and then called it a croissant. Number 47. The Wiener Reisenrad, constructed in 1897, is the oldest still operating Ferris wheel in the world. I'm sure it's been oiled and fixed and stuff since, but crikey, that seems dangerous. Located in the Versal Prata Amusement Park, this is one of Vienna's most popular tourist attractions. Number 48. The wheel featured in the 1949 film The Third Man. So, there's that. Everyone's favourite film with a man in it, isn't it? I prefer The Second Man myself, but there we go. Number 49. Pez, the fun little tablet candies we all know and love that could easily be accidentally mixed with real medicine to cause an accident, I'm just saying, be careful, were invented in Vienna in 1927. Yep, they ain't American, boyo. The name Pez is an abbreviation of the German word Pfefferminz, meaning peppermint. Number 50. The dispenser was invented in 1949, designed to look like a lighter. Smoking was prohibited at that time, so the Pez slogan was No Smoking, Pezzing Allowed because, you know, they're definitely the same thing and feed the same cravings. Number 51. The snow globe, every movie's favourite go-to object for symbolism, was invented in Austria's capital. In 1900, Irvin Percy, a fine instruments mechanic, was trying to improve the brightness of light bulbs for a surgical lamp, but instead he accidentally invented a snow globe. How the hell did that happen? Number 52. According to Mercer's Quality of Living survey, Vienna has been voted the city with the best quality of life for the last seven years in a row. Although I swear we say this every single time we do a country, but anyway. Number 53. Almost three million people a year visit the city's most famous church, St. Stephen's Cathedral, or Stephen's Dom, built in the 12th century. Could this be the key to why it's the best city in the world to live in? Well, almost certainly not, but it's interesting still, huh? Number 54. That tower, by the way, has 13 bells and stands 448 feet high, and you have to clamber sweatily up 343 steps to get to the top. Number 5. 
But it's the big belly boy Pumarin Bell in the 224 foot tall tower that happens to be the second largest free swinging European chime church bell. That's the thing with huge ringers like this, they're so big from a distance you can't see where the bell starts and the bell at. Number 56. One of the most popular eateries in the city is a kiosk called the Verstalstand am Hohen Markt, where you can get some lovely hot dogs. They come with sweet or spicy mustard too. Interesting. Tasty too. Number 57. If you're a part of the ocean family, or perhaps a penguin that likes to bother old men and their dogs, you might want to hear this. At 2,860 carats, the world's largest emerald is on display in Vienna at the Imperial Treasury. Number 58. The city is home to the Austrian National Library, one of the world's major libraries. It dates back to the 14th century and is home to more than 2 million books. Number 59. Every year, Viennese ball season runs from New Year's Eve to Shrove Tuesday. It's nothing to do with sport, or anatomy by the way, it's those fancy ones, you know, like Beauty and the Beast style. In fact, more than 450 balls take place in the Austrian capital alone. Number 60. No enough about Vienna because it means nothing to me. Oh, I did that earlier. Salzburg is another famous part of Austria. Located in north central Austria, it's only three miles from the border to Germany. Number 61. The Hohen Salzburg Fortress sits right in the middle of Salzburg city. Construction of this fortress began in 1077, but it wasn't really finished until 1519. Number 62. Salzburg literally means salt castle, due to all the salt mining done around the city. I mean, it's not a castle actually made of salt, I don't think. Would that be good or bad? Number 63. The 1965 film The Sound of Music was filmed in Salzburg. Locations such as the spookily named Hellbrunn Palace, Felsen Reitschul, Nonberg Abbey and Mirabel Palace Gardens were used during the filming of the movie. Number 64. No. Nintendo 64. But even though the film was based and filmed in Salzburg, the real life Maria von Trapp, because remember it is a true story except for the puppet bit because surely they can't have been that good, was actually born in Vienna on January the 26th, 1905. Number 65. Even though the Sound of Music seemed like a huge hit, I mean it was I guess, but anyway, the film was released in Austria 35 years after its US premiere. The film received bad reviews in German speaking countries, low viewer numbers and was generally a failure. Number 66. Salzburg is surrounded by mountains, and to keep them mountains looking sharp they had mountain cleaners. That's to say people who clean the mountains, not mountains that are cleaners, they'd make more mess than they clear up. For more than 350 years, the professional group of mountain cleaners has ensured the safety of the inhabitants of Salzburg. Number 67. To do this, they clear up loose stones and rocks and stuff. Today, 12 mountain cleaners inspect over 300,000 square meters at Monschberg, Kapuzinerberg, Nonberg, Festungsberg, Rheinberg, and Hellbrunnerberg to make sure there are no loose rocks. Number 68. The Salzburg Nockerl is a popular dessert that was inspired by these mountains. Invented by the mistress of a Salzburg prince archbishop in the 17th century. <laughs> Scandal. The three hills of sugary beaten egg whites represent Salzburg's snow-covered local mountains. Number 69. Nockerl. Founded in 803, the Haslauer is the world's oldest inn and restaurant still in operation and the oldest company in Europe. Number 70. Also in Salzburg, the state that is, there's the Krimmel Falls. That's nothing to do with Jimmy Kimmel, by the way, it's Krimmel. And they're Europe's tallest waterfalls, reaching a height of 380 meters. Number 71. We mentioned him earlier, but a legendary composer of the classic era, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, was born in Salzburg on the 27th of January, 1756. Number 72. He was born at, and let's just accept, I'm going to say this wrong, Get Rider Gas 9, which is now a museum that shows visitors a glimpse at the early life of the composer and a spa convenience store underneath for refreshments. <laughs> sure, that can't have been there when he was young though, right? Could it? I, I don't know, maybe. Number 73. During his final years in Vienna, he composed many of his best known symphonies, concertos and operas and portions of the Requiem, which was largely unfinished at the time of his early death at the age of 35. I suppose death will do that to you. Number 74. Mozart was such a beloved Austrian that he even had his own confectionery. The sweets are made of pistachio marzipan, dark chocolate and nougat and are known as Mozart Kugel. Number 75. There are 13 types of Mozart Kugel. They are now produced industrially to meet the great demand rather than being handmade though, which I guess is a bit like music when you really think about it. Yeah, deep. Number 76. They were created in 1890 by Salzburg confectioner Paul First. At the 1905 World Confectionery Exhibition in Paris, his Mozart ball was awarded the gold medal. 
Number 77. It's not just musical artistry either. Many famous artists and painters such as oh, such as Friedenreich Hundenwasser or Gustav Klimt are also from Austria. Number 78. Arnold Schwarzenegger was born in Thal, Austria too. His father was a local chief of police and served in World War II as a Hauptfeldwerdel after voluntarily joining the German army in 1938. Oh dear. Number 79. Thinking of the bad part of World War II, let's talk about the main one, yeah? Adolf Hitler was born in Braunau am Inn, which was then part of Austria-Hungary. Number 80. Vienna's Academy der Bildenden Kunst, very close to a word I can't say, also known as Academy of the Fine Arts, is famous for rejecting a young painter Adolf Hitler. Of the 128 applicants that applied in 1907, one of the 100 that failed was Hitler. What an absolute idiot. Number 81. The house he was born in has since been turned into a police station. This came after years of the country's divided opinion on what to do with the building. Number 82. Anyway, Christoph Waltz, who's good at playing villains but isn't actually one, was born and raised in Vienna. He attended the Thericinium boarding school and also the University of Music and Performing Arts in Vienna, which I almost accidentally read as the University of Magic and made me want to go there. Number 83. What with Vienna being the city of music and everything, he also studied singing and opera, but decided his voice wasn't good enough. Oh, Christoph, I'm sure that's not true. Redo Django Unchained as an opera. Number 84. Ernst Mack was an Austrian fella who was certainly very significant to the world, perhaps not as good as an actor's waltz, but anyway. In 1888, while studying shockwaves, he was the first person to study supersonic motion. That blue little hedgehog fella would have been called something else if it wasn't for him. Number 85. Subsequently, in 1929, the system of Mach numbers for speed was introduced, named after Mach and its discovery. And some would say it was the, uh, <laughs> return of the Mach. Yeah? Yeah. Number 86. The second woman to win the Nobel Peace Prize was pacifist and novelist Baroness Bertha von Suttner in 1905. She published her pacifist novel, Die Waffen Neider, Lay Down Your Arms, in 1889, and became a big part of the peace movement. She was Austrian, which is why we're talking about her, obviously. Number 87. Joseph Mandersberger, who was born in Kufstein, invented the sewing machine in 1818. There's a lot of smart people in Austria, if I don't say so myself. I'm on a roll today. Number 88. The Austrian chef Wolfgang Puck, who owns over 70 restaurants in the USA, is the second highest earning chef in the world, with revenues of $16 million a year, according to Forbes magazine. Number 89. Did you know that Red Bull is an Austrian company? Well, you do now. Entrepreneur Dietrich Mateschitz and Thai businessman Chaleo Yvidia founded Red Bull GmbH in 1984 in Austria. Number 90. Originally, Red Bull started as a Thai drink called Kratting Daying, which was geared towards truckers who needed something to get them through their long shifts. I mean, to be fair, it probably still does. Number 91. In 2019, a total of 7.5 billion cans of Red Bull were sold worldwide in over 171 countries. Number 92. The Red Bull cans, by the way, are entirely recyclable. Additionally, the manufacturing is done in one location, which saves 80% of renewable resources, as opposed to having multiple locations. This video is not a sponsor, by the way. And to bring it all back to Austria generally, a 2010 report showed that Austrians are the top recyclers in Europe, with 63% of waste being recycled. Number 93. Despite all the bad press, Red Bull contains the same amount of caffeine as a regular cup of coffee, which is ATMG. So, hat on them haters. Number 94. Red Bull are most famous for their energy drink, yes, but also they're known for their sponsorship of a range of sporting events, which include motorsports, ice hockey, esports, and football, all of which are played in Austria. Mm. Number 95. In fact, the first sporting event put on by Red Bull in 1988 was called the Dolomite Man, up in what's known as the Dolomite Mountains. This was said to be the world's toughest team relay race, and they weren't lying either. Number 96. The event includes mountain running, paragliding, mountain biking, and kayaking in that order. Just sounds difficult if you ask me. Get a Guitar Hero contest on, then you're speaking my language. Number 97. Aligning with how much Austria loves music, they also started their own record label, Red Bull Records, and have their own music academy that organises music workshops and festivals around the world. Number 98. The headquarters and many of the offices of Red Bull are located in Fuchsel, and there are also some other Red Bull buildings in Salzburg, which brings us back around to Austria. Number 99. 
Alright, actually, just quickly, this isn't really related to Austria, but... In 2014, Red Bull was sued for false advertising. Why? Because of their slogan, Red Bull gives you wings. A consumer said he'd been drinking Red Bull for 10 years and never gained wings or enhanced athletic skills. It ended up being a $13 million lawsuit. Number a Honda Railed. By the way, the German name for Vienna is Vienne. That means Austria's most famous dish, the Vienna Schnitzel, translates to the Viennese Schnitzel, which is a strange quirk of language, eh? Number 101. The national definition of a standard alcoholic drink in Austria is 20 grams of pure ethanol, about twice higher than in other European countries. So they like to get sloshed is what I'm hearing. Let's all go. So those were 101 facts about Austria. Have you been to Austria? Have you been to Vienna or Salzburg? Maybe you live there. Let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to 101 facts if you haven't done so already, because you know, we really do appreciate you jumping on the ball the good ship. In the meantime though, here are two videos on screen you're really gonna get your teeth into, I can tell. Why not give it a watch and I'll see you there. Bye.